Welcome back everyone, today we're going to be tackling another world record time but instead of doing what I normally do and take a random car and show you how to upgrade and tune it, I thought I would explain in depth how you can set a faster lap time and rank up in the leaderboard while everyone is using the same car. If you're new and you're unfamiliar with my videos, I will leave a link in the description below of a playlist full of world record videos where I show you how to build a leaderboard car. There's over 20 videos to choose from, all using completely different cars, so I truly hope it helps you and it makes you a better Forza driver. So instead of choosing a car and then turning it into a leaderboard beastie, we're actually going to head over to the monthly rivals tab and choose a track where the car is picked for you. Now the reason why I am doing this is I don't want the car to be the star. This is all about you as a driver. There is no tuning involved, there is no upgrading allowed, everyone on this track will be using this. The funky Halo M12S Warthog. Now, I understand everybody drives differently, you all have your own style, so instead of me saying do this and do that, I'm simply going to show you the best way to tackle this particular track, but in such a way you'll be able to apply it to other tracks as well. It's all about keeping momentum and making sure your speed is always maxed out. Even just a drop in a few mile an hour can mean the difference between a fast time and a world record time. A lot of people ask me which are the best settings and what do you use, well here is the complete rundown of everything I run and these never change. They might take a while for you to get used to, you might in fact never get used to them at all, but unfortunately it's something I cannot teach as it's all down to you and how comfortable you feel using them. All I can say is be persistent, in the long run these will really help. Everything in Forza Horizon 3 is trial and error, you need to go wrong to understand where the best places are to be faster, and the track we're taking on is the perfect example. Apostle Beach Cross Country has it all, many stupid things to hit and drive through, loads of elevation changes and jumps that can completely ruin your run. It's very tricky, so let's get going. A really good tip for any cross country event is vibration scale. Yes, it may hurt your hand after about 10 minutes, but turning this all the way up to 100% can be really handy. The less it vibrates during your run tells you that the route you're taking is smoother, which means you're going faster. Use it to your advantage. Now when you begin, you want to make sure you hit your final gear before you start to climb the hill. This saves roughly a quarter of a second as your car won't be struggling to shift gear while climbing. Once you're at the top, you can do a little rival mode glitch. This happens by hitting breakable trees and other things and then restarting your run. When you restart, those things you hit will be removed from the track. Now, I don't condone this, the problem is if you don't do it, other people will, so if you want to be as quick, you're best off doing it. After that, you'll come across your first jump, but before you do, make sure you don't hit the black and white sign. This can really throw you off guard. You want to take the jump on the left hand side, the landing is more mellow and you will gain much more momentum on the way down. The speed you will gain going down the longer side will help you in the next part. For this hill you want to be in the middle, if you get this correct you should be able to carry enough speed to jump over this fence here. Clearing it gives you an advantage to those who don't. Now you have a long section of up and down segments broken apart with lots of fences. The key here is to hit the wire part of the fence. The support beams joining them slow you down more. It's not easy when there's loads of them, I will admit, but it does help in keeping your speed. This may seem obvious and very basic, but it always happens. Make sure you approach every jump in the game straight. Any slight angle will throw your car completely off balance. So here's a little tip for taking difficult corners. When you start to turn, just very slightly tap your handbrake. Not enough to start a drift or go sideways, but just enough to give your car a kick around a corner. This is also a perfect technique for road races with lots of tight corners. But for me, instead of doing that, I decided to go the difficult path and squeeze in between these three trees here. This is completely up to you, both ways are equally as quick. At the end, you will face the biggest jump in Horizon 3. Now, the technique here is, well, there isn't one. Going sideways mid-air will line you up with the checkpoint below much better, but it will ruin your speed. Jumping straight means landing smoother, but you risk staying in the ocean for that little bit longer. Unfortunately, this part is completely up to you. After that, it's a flat-out race to the finishing line. And that's it. 
I truly hope this video helps you. Please, if it does, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will hopefully catch you all next time. Take it easy guys, thanks for watching, bye bye!